Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number 55. 55, I can do that one. That was yeah, easy. Yeah, that's an easy one. Yeah. When am I going to come up with the scoreboard? I just have to get Sue ready for that one. I keep forgetting. <laughs> so uh, okay, anyway, yeah, it's tech talk number 55. If you have a home voiceover studio tech question, we'd love to hear from you. Just throw it in the chat room or if you're on mm -hmm. Clubhouse Live, Raise your hand in there, and we will get to your question in just a little bit. But George and I got lots of stuff to talk about tonight, lots of gear, and, and, and we're going to have a little discussion on whether you should use a dynamic mic or not. When so, is it appropriate? When is it appropriate? If at all. And if at all. So stay tuned. Time for Voice Over Body Shop Tech Talk right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars. A Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, Remote Studio Connections for Everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to thrive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop or VO. B.S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. All right. <laughs> Thanks, it's Jeff. Time, time for Tech Talk. And uh, we're here to talk about your home voiceover studios. Uh, so, again, if you got questions, throw them in the Facebook chat room, in the chat room, in YouTube. And if you are on Clubhouse, we'd love to hear your voice. So raise your hand in there. Uh, you know... George and I do this stuff with home voice. Talk about a niche market. Uh, you know, we could talk about this a little bit later. Everybody else is saying, well, they're an expert. Everybody else is an expert in one studio, their own. Uh, George and I have worked on thousands of home voiceover studios and actual voiceover studios. Not that your home voiceover studio isn't an actual voiceover studio, but you know what I mean. It's an actual voiceover studio that happens to be at home. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. So, professional uh, personal studios isn't that what we were calling them at one point at one at one point but everybody no everybody keeps calling it a home studio all right yeah, so it's what if, you're, what if you're not actually in your home you know maybe yeah, what if you're, you're maybe, like in a shed in the backyard that's right in your she shed in your show you, shed she shed studio yes you know we, marcy has her new she shed and she's been sewing silk sheets in her she shed does marcy sell seashells in the she sea shed in her she shed there's no seashells in there yet but I may just dump a bag of them in there just to see what her reaction is. <laughs> anyway. Is that uh, like a cucumber and a cat? No, no. Trust just, me. Google it. <laughs> a cucumber and a cat? <laughs> yeah. Look, look up on YouTube. Put in cats and cucumbers. Okay. When I uh, Trust chance. me. If you okay. haven't, just trust me. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, if you need help with your home voiceover studio, and what that could mean you got a technical issue, Something's not working. Something doesn't sound right. You get a notice from a client saying, there's something wrong with your audio. 
um, or you know something along those lines, or you don't know what mic to have, or you don't know how to set it up, there's only one place you can, well, there's two places you can go. And that's talk to George or I. Well, and you start here, then you find out about the two of us. Right. And then you find our two websites. Right. You know, not that we don't work together every now and again. No, we bounce stuff off of each other all the time. Oh, trust yeah. me. I mean, we, we are a hive mind when it comes to this sort of thing, sure. which is, which is why you're here watching voice over body shop tech talk right now. But if you want to work with George and the guy knows what he's talking about, where would they go? They go to George the dot tech. Okay. That's the domain. I'm not stuttering. That really is it. George the dot tech. My name is my address. Uh, if you want to head over there, you can book services, services through my automated booking system. You can get a sound check. That's the least expensive and simplest thing to do. If you have no idea what to do, just start there. Um, and uh, design studios from the ground up. Really kind of just about everything. But I'm not the only guy. Maybe I'm a little too booked up right now. Maybe you need another guy to get you through something. When I'm a little I don't want to be your overflow. I mean, come on. <laughs> Dan is my, is my henchman. My henchman. No, now Dan, Dan, Dan does this, a lot of the same stuff over in his corner of the web. And that is homevoiceoverstudio.com. Yeah. Head on over there. You know, I, 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 I like to think that I'm, you know, I feel like a therapist a lot of times when I'm working with Tell people, uh, you know, there's, there's a, how do I do this? And how do I do that? Calm down. I know. It's not, it's not rocket science. You know, unless you're doing something for NASA, uh, and uh, and we'll, I can talk you off the ledge. How often do you say, "Why did you buy that?" Uh, at least two or three times a day, uh, <laughs> yeah. which which we will get into a little bit later. Um, and uh, I have a, a great service as as does George. I've got my specimen collection cup over at HomeVoiceOverStudio.com. For audio. And if you've got your studio set up and you got all your equipment and you want to see if it sounds right. You can put a specimen in my specimen collection cup, which is a Dropbox, and I will give an analysis to your audio. Very thorough. And if I think you need lots more help, we can propose something to make sure that uh, we get you sounding the way it's supposed to sound like. So, Whistle. That's right. Anyway, let's get into the meat of the matter this afternoon or this evening or whatever time you're watching this. It could be lunchtime in Australia because we have viewers all over the world listening and watching our show. Uh, but let's get into George's tech update. What you got this week? Well, I thought I'd go with a couple of my favorite things. Um, one of them has been a favorite for a little couple of weeks, and one of them is becoming a favorite because it hasn't broken during the show yet. So let's talk about the first one. <laughs> good. Um, that's, a, that's a good uh, parameter to use there. Yeah. Huh? Uh, the first one is uh, if you're looking for a, a, a mic arm or a boom arm or whatever that you can mount to the wall of your booth or to a workstation or if you're daring like me we don't always recommend it but directly to your desk um i've got one that i've been pretty happy with so there's the really really cheap ones you'll see on amazon now and there are a ton of them yeah. tons of them for like 20 dollars with springs on them and they're very lightweight metal and flimsy and if you're putting up a $40 USB mic, fine. But if you're strapping up a hundred to thousand dollar to $3,000 mic, you want something really sturdy and possibly also really good looking. Um, and that's where this Gator, uh, frameworks 3000 mic arm comes in. Um, you can see the business end of it and let's see, what can I do to show it a little bit better? Well, it's, you can see the, the main, most important part of it right here, which is this arm, this aluminum arm, and then it's got these locking knobs. So you can Ooh. exactly precisely big mount. Big thumb wheels. Yeah, these big thumb wheels, you can mount exactly where you want it to go and have it stay there. So it'll stay where you put it, but you can still do this, and move it around. Um, now... I like this thing. It, it's got an internal mic cable, which some people balk at the idea because they're like, well, if that cable breaks, what do you do? Well, if that cable breaks, you just snip it off right here and at the bottom and you just run another cable. Okay. Cause you can't change the cable. I agree that it's not the greatest thing, but 
it's really very sturdy. It has a really good mount. The hardware is nice. It looks really good. And it's way less expensive compared to the, the Mica arms from Yellow Tech, which are triple the price. So those are good looking Mica arms too. But if that's a little rich for your blood, this is a nice one. Really, really happy with it. I have an additional accessory and it's not the, I got vaccinated. Not, not your COVID sticker there. Not the COVID sticker that matters, but there's a little extra accessory I map mounted to it. This is made by our, our buddy over at the Hook Studios. The guy that made the pop screen that goes on the end of the shotgun mic um, and the little tiny pop screen that we had EWABs printed on. I wish I had one with an arm's reach, but I don't. Anyway, he makes these little tiny suspension units. Now, the one I have right here is a early, early prototype. And as you can see, the glue is coming up. Getting a little, a little bit, bit of separation there. Yes. So this is a very early prototype, but this is now something he sells at thehookstudios.com, and it's an alternative to a normal shock mount. So instead of having a giant suspension thing with elastics that wear out, this does a pretty good job of, of stopping a lot of noise and vibration, and it's very compact. So I kind of like that. So that's something you can check out. Moving on. Um, okay, so, so far... Uh, nobody has complained about my audio glitching and my camera image skipping. Yeah. So I will mention my new camera. Um, <laughs> I'm using a camera called the Mokos. That's the M-O-K-O-S-E UC70. And this is a, um, a 4K USB 3.0 webcam. And that's not so unusual. Dan's got the Logitech Brio 4K, right. which is fantastic because you can see how good the color is. This one, the color is a little bit of a, a little, takes a little work to get it dialed in. But what I like about it is the lens has a manually settable focus, zoom, and iris. So hmm. you can, it's like having an old fashioned camera. You can set all that and then lock it down. It doesn't focus in and out. It doesn't get wonky with different colors of lighting. It just stays there. And so I've been very happy with it. And so far, so good tonight. Dan, have you heard me glitch or skip? Seen anything weird? You sound perfect tonight. Okay, well, <laughs> the sound the sounds pretty well sorted. It was just, ah, we were having these glitches that were driving me crazy. So you know what's going to be sent right back or, or at least sold <laughs> is my, 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 my Ultra Studio recorder from Blackmagic because I've been having trouble with it. Now, I don't know if it's the fault of that piece of gear, Chrome, or the combination or the fact that I'm on an Apple Silicon Mac, as you are, Dan. I know this. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't. We're not sure what that is. We'll talk about Silicon Mac in a minute about whether you should get one now or not. Um, next thing on the list, I've got a screen share going here of Twisted Wave with two different noise reduction plugins, and we all know we prefer that we not have to use stuff like this, but we do also know a lot of you voice actors are in noisy cities and uh, you're just trying to do whatever you can do to pull off. And so I just want to show you these two plugins because they're quite a contrast to each other. So on the right is Isotopes RX. This is their voice denoise plugin. Um, it's part of a bundle. You're going to spend, uh, if you get it on a super duper sale on the elements package, it can get very affordable. Most of the time, it's going to be between $140 to $400. Um, and you're buying a whole bundle of plugins that you may or may not need. If you want something to just deal with noise, I stumbled on this one. It's called the Bertom Denoiser, B-E-R-T-O-M. Maybe it's made by two buddies, Bert and Tom. I don't know. But it's the Bertom <laughs> Denoiser. And what makes this one different from RX's voice denoise and also... Um, the denoise, the noise reduction tools in um, Adobe Audition and in Audacity, things that where you select and sound noise print, and then it learns it and tries to mathematically, algorithmically remove it. Um, this one doesn't work that way. This one's using very much more of a, uh, audio processing tools that are sort of based on what we, we would call a multi-band expander. And so the long and the short of it is, is it, doesn't really make much in the way of artifacts. You know how when you over denoise something, it sounds kind of weird and swishy, and sometimes some, some might say robotic. Yeah. yeah, it does that weird sound. 
This tool doesn't do that. Um, now, if you overcook it, it starts to sound a little muted or muffled, but um, it's quite amazing because you can use it in real time too. And what do I mean by that is, let's say um, you want to use this with something that's a DAW, like Reaper or Pro Tools or Logic. This plugin can be used while you're actually recording. Oh, so, so front end. You can use this front end. It has very, very low latency. So when I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure this is bypassed, this plugin. I'm going to close this, actually. And if I hit play, let's see if this is going to go. Uh, I need to change audio devices to make sure this goes out to the world. And that should do it. So a crowd of a thousand seagulls came to dodge. and You know what? That's not working because Bluetooth is degrading the audio quality. Oh. So that was a surprise. I didn't think that was going to happen. Sometimes when you use Bluetooth with the board, it, it, it dumbs down the audio and it becomes low-fi, like a telephone call. So that didn't work. But what I would recommend for you guys is to at least try it. And the reason why it's a good one to try is because there's no fee to use it. You can pay what you want. It's what they call honorware. So you can get it and pay $0 and try it. And if you like it, well, you can do what I did, which is go back and then buy it for whatever dollar amount you prefer. Um, and, uh, it's, it's, it's a really good sounding tool. And, um, I was just really incredibly impressed with it because for what it costs and the fact that you can actually use it in a signal chain, even while you're doing something like source connect, if you know how to set that up and I can help you with that, you can use a, a tool, tool like this to, to clean up a really difficult noise situation. And it does it pretty, pretty well. Excellent. Moving on, uh, let's talk a little bit about Silicon, the Apple Silicon Macs, the ones that came out uh, back at, in November, I guess it was, or late October. So Dan and I are both using them. I will tell you that overall, you know, there are mystery glitches. Dan's going to talk about his. My mystery glitch was, well, it's the reason I have this new USB camera. I was having glitches using this Blackmagic Ultra Studio. It's so new. The drivers are all new. Everything's so damn new. Nobody can really properly tech it. They don't, they don't have a lot of data to go by. And it just was like, I, I knew there was no way I was going to find a fix easily. So I, I patched around it by changing my camera. Um, and it's so far so good. It's been fine. The other thing I had to look out for is if you're using third-party plugins, exactly like the ones I just showed you, um, and you launch Twisted Wave or whatever your DAW is, in the silicon, uh, native silicon setting, um, it won't load those plugins. So you will actually have to force that program to load itself in a compatibility mode. How would you do that? I'll show you very quickly. Uh, if I go to Finder, um, open, I'm gonna bring over my applications folder. Now you should be able to see that, Sue. Hopefully that's working. All right, there we go. Um, in this particular case, I would, I would do a get info, command I on the Twisted Wave app itself, and then I would actually check open using Rosetta. So it sounds weird, but what I'm doing is for forcing Twisted Wave to run as though it's the old version, not the new version, and that allows it to run those plugins. Hmm. So if, if you're not using any plugins, you're only using what came with Twisted Wave or came with Adobe, uh, came with uh, the Mac, it does work perfectly fine. But if you're trying to load third party plugins, a lot of them have not gotten their silicon compatibility up yet. So using this open, using Rosetta thing does the trick. And uh, these computers are so fast that even when the computer is emulating, that's what it's doing, it's pretending it's another computer, an Intel computer, it still seems to perform admirably. It's fast it seems to work without any real issues. So that's been my experience. It's not been completely smooth, but overall I, I don't regret making the move. And I'm this close to selling my, my Intel Mac mini on that's sitting on the table right behind me. Me too. And that means we have two for at? sale out there. Yeah. Where are you, where are you at with this whole Silicon Mac? Mini? I had a weird thing go on today, but I think I figured out what it was. Cause I, I put a, um, a smaller external hard drive on cause I wanted to, you know, clean on, clean it off. And, and, yep. and, and then it started going bananas. Hmm. I, I had a problem with Adobe audition this morning. It kept freezing on me. 
Well, how know. were you copying stuff? Were you using Time Machine or just literally just I was copy just copying pasting. and pasting and throwing it in the other hard drive. But and hmm. and it 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 just kind of like didn't want to do it. And then hmm. and then I've been having interesting things go on with Adobe Audition where the spectrogram suddenly disappears and you open it and go back and forth and you know oh. it reappears. So it's it's getting kind of glitchy and I'm not used to that. Because no. my stuff never glitches. No. Uh, so uh, it's, but you know, when it, if stuff like that happens, it's like, like when in doubt, reboot. And that uh, clears it up for well, the it, duration? It, it certainly, it, it did free it up. Uh, so is it ready for prime time? It's definitely <sighs> faster. I mean, I, I, there's, there's, you know, it's, it's a, it's an interesting computer that's, that's a little bit faster. Uh, you know, I'd say I'd wait until they, a lot of the other software that's you know that we use uh, is caught up with 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 uh, Apple. So uh, tomorrow's a day is a big day, I believe. Well, I should actually should time shift this. If you're watching this live, I believe there's going to be some announcements from Apple. Oh, um, if you're watching this in replay, well, you already know what those are. But I I think they might be announcing some new computers. Oh, okay. so we shall see what comes. Something besides an Air and a Pro and a MacBook Pro and a, yeah, and a maybe and a, maybe the real MacBook Pro, the the big boy, the 16 inch or something. Oh, I, they're cool. saying maybe new iMacs. Ooh. Um, so I don't know, but you, we're going to find out. But it doesn't make me not like my M1, knowing something quote unquote better is coming. I don't really care that something better is coming. I just want to make sure that the development, you know, is, we know that over time things get more stable. So we know that we we know that the most stable Mac they've ever made is probably my 2018 sitting back here on this table, because that thing's been in development for many years. The OS on it has been developed for many years, and we are bleeding edge new tech when we go to this new Silicon Mac. But when you're using a really simplified system for most people, especially if you're just using something as simple as Twisted Wave, it's been pretty pretty darn rock solid. And if you're really yeah. needing a new Mac right now and you need a quiet computer, the thousand dollar MacBook air is just, it's, it's just such a no brainer. Yeah. It just I, doesn't make a peep. Yeah. My son's really enjoying his. So that that's a, yeah. a good endorsement there. Yeah. We've been really happy. I love that. I can sit and edit video and just do general personal projects while it's laying on my lap and it's never going to burn my legs. <laughs> It yeah, never gets a, so yeah. hot that you can't stand it. You can yeah. My, our, my old work, my old MacBook Pro. It gets like, boy, I wish I was back in Buffalo. Would be keeping my knees warm. My 2019 <laughs> MacBook Pro gets heck of really, really hot. So yeah, yeah no, I do, I do appreciate that yeah. very much. So I think you know, I think if you're wondering, let let us know what your particular situation is, what software you use every day, uh, what your interfaces are, because no, the Apollo is still not officially supported so i definitely don't recommend it i've already set it up for a few of you but i still am doing it with a huge caveat a huge asterisk that you know asterisk at your own risk how do we make that into something yeah, there um <laughs> so anywho All um right. let's talk about mics and whether you should go billy eilish or james hetfield yeah uh we we get a lot of questions and 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 you know when we ask what mic are you using and a lot of times we get the you know the response back of oh i'm using an sm7b or i'm using an re20 or an re23 or because somebody said those are great voiceover mics because they never said radio that with yeah. vo they think they're the same thing <laughs> right Ra radio and video or ra radio and voiceover are not the same thing yeah your voice might get on the radio but you're not trying to sound like you're on the radio when you're on the radio, there's a reason radio sounds the way it does. Not that anybody listens to the radio anymore. I mean, you know, you got, you got CDs, you got MP3s, you got satellite, you streaming. got streaming, you know, I, I hardly listen to, I mean, I, I listen to classical music on, on, you know, on FM but, and it sounds great in my new car. But anyway, <laughs> um, I, I have in my very hand. Uh, an RE20. <laughs> uh, that sniffing of the mic reminds me of another story that I'll, maybe I'll tell again someday. Okay. Yeah. Let, let, let me turn the, all right. So normally, you know, you're going to hear me, you know, on this show on, on, on the VO1A, the Harlan Hogan VO1A. And usually from at least a foot away too. Yeah. I'm a, I'm, I'm a good, 
Well, this is exactly eight inches. So yeah, I'm you're you're usually you're about doing that. you're you're getting to work it tight. When we normally on right. the show together, we're at a distant right. placement. Yeah, you know? right. But if if I if I turn off and put on here's the RE twenty. If you're way off on the RE twenty, you're way off, and you sound distant. Now, does it cut out a lot of you know external noise? Yes. Yeah. But if those of us who remember being on the radio and using an RE twenty. Usually you were like doing this and that's, you know, how a dynamic mic works. There's only one problem where voiceover is a natural thing. We, we had, uh, Brian Falk on last week who talked about, you got to sound natural and we don't naturally talk to people half an inch from their eardrum. So, uh, it, it's important to realize that this is not a voiceover mic. Now, what we see is we see a lot of people who are vocalists singers using dynamic mics which is great it's fabulous because when singers sing they use a lot more spl sound pressure levels they are louder they're singing except for one example and in <laughs> honor of that i have my 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 blue mustache as you can see in honor of <laughs> you dyed your hair blue yeah, yeah well, i had a one to you know, <laughs> match, match the misses. So when we take our masks <laughs> off, Hey, we look the same. Uh, so, um, anyway, uh, Billy Eilish who, uh, who sings very quietly and I'm actually starting to get into her music. It's actually pretty cool, which is, it could be, hypnop- it could be rather hypnotic and yeah, it is some you know, really, I mean, really amazing. I, yeah. You can tell, you know, their influences there from, um, oh, what's her name? Anderson, uh, from many years ago. Uh, oh, Amy some, Anderson. No, a, uh, not Amy Anderson. Uh, damn, I know you're talking about. I, I know who I'm yeah, talking about. I can't remember her first name. She's it's, still a kid. <laughs> yeah. She's only like yeah, 18 now. Eight, I no, she, I think she's 20 now. Yeah, 20. Mm-hmm. But I, the, the documentary on her was really, really it good. It was good on Apple TV. I recommend it. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I would recommend it as well. But she sings so quietly. But she uses, what mic does she use? I believe it's a Neumann TLM 103. Yeah. So you can, mm-hmm. you can work a TLM 103 really yeah. close. And, uh, you know, I mean, you can hear dogs barking everywhere, but it's, uh, that's right. That's the downside. <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, you but know, uh, I you mentioned know. another name, you know, James Hetfield. James yeah. Hetfield is the lead singer of Metallica. <laughs> and he is known for using a dynamic mic. He uses an SM7B. That mic is, it loves to be yelled at. Yeah. <laughs> that mic. That's what it's built for. It is. Yeah. It can take a, ha- a very high level of volume, a very high SBL. And uh, it can take it without an issue. Now, I've really recommended it. I'll never really be the one to recommend it for most voiceover. If you're doing a lot of character work, maybe you're doing a lot of very zany audiobook character stuff, maybe for kids' books, I don't know. Or, or gaming sometimes. Gaming, and, and your dynamic range is really out there. It can work. Um, it can work. But it's just one, of, it's a specialty mic. It's not something that's a general purpose voiceover mic that I would ever recommend for that reason it just right. doesn't have the sensitivity right and they don't want you using them over at the studios pretty much yeah. not yeah. yeah and that's why yeah. you won't see them in studios you know? that's right always that's a right. good studio condenser mic or the 416 which is also a studio condenser mic but mm-hmm. a lot of other things anyway we got lots of questions to yeah, deal with do. here <laughs> and scrolling uh, around going whoa well, now everybody wants to talk yeah sure okay well we'll take a quick break here and we will be back answering your questions right here on voiceover body shop tech talk right after this you're still watching vlbs <laughs> well it looks like traveling is coming back into vogue and harlan hogan's porter booth pro and plus Make recording on the road a breeze. And in that spirit, here are some of Harlan's top tips for recording professional quality audio away from home in 2021. Number one, the motel ironing board. Practically every hotel and motel provides an ironing board in your room. But forget ironing. It's a perfect height-adjustable stand for your Portabooth Pro or Portabooth Plus. Two, if you can, turn off the heat and the air conditioning. Three, switch off the fridge or minibar. Four, Request a room that's inherently quiet away from the vending machines. Harlan's been known to actually unplug them. After about 9 a.m., most hotel fitness centers are deserted. Here's a bonus tip. Use voice-optimized headphones and stay away from windows. Harlan has a whole bunch more tips for you VO Road Warriors. 
So check out voiceoveressentials.com before you check in and get your travel-friendly Portabooth Pro or Plus. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the VoiceOver Body Shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. I'm going to keep this one short. We got a lot of questions to get to tonight and we want to make sure we get to them all. So I'm going to just tell you, go to source-elements.com, get a 15-day free trial of Source Connect. Make sure you know how to use it. If you don't, go to georgethe.tech slash sc and check out all my user guides and videos on how to use Source Connect and set it up. If you need advanced help beforehand, you're not sure what to do, let me know. But if you're, if you're a paying user who's bought the license or are subscribing, get help from Source Elements. They've got over 30 people right now taking calls, helping folks, and dealing with their technical issues, which really sets them apart. I'm telling you, their support is bar none. Source Connect, you should have it in your toolbox to be considered a real working voiceover pro. We'll be right back with tons of questions. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. And we are back with all of your questions. And uh, we got a pile of them here. Here's uh, the, so, Now we get them mailed in. To the guys at VOBS.TV. You can write one of those anytime. And sometimes we might answer them personally and then lend it to the show. Uh, like this particular one from Angela Butler. She says, issue. I want to change my digital audio working station from Audacity to Adobe Audition. But Adobe Audition's website states minimum requirements for a Mac OS X is version 10.14 or higher. So the question is, as stated above, or as I said before, since mine is a Mac OS Sierra server version 10.12.6, will my system realistically, successfully, appropriately, <laughs> safely handle a DAW change to Adobe Audition? What do you think? Actually, I, actually, I frankly don't know. I mean, when a company says it will needs to run on a certain OS. It depends on the company. In the terms of Avid and Pro Tools, if they say it won't run on something, it means they won't let you install it. <laughs> so when you go to install it, it just goes, Stop nope. right there, yeah. <laughs> now, it doesn't mean it won't run. It just means they won't let you install it. Now, Adobe Audition Creative Cloud and the way it works, um, it may have a way of checking your system and it may prevent you from installing. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't get old ver older versions of Adobe Audition. They, they do make available through the Creative Cloud uh, legacy versions. I don't know how far back, but I, I know you can get, say, Adobe 2019 or Audition 2019 or 2017 sometimes. So um, if that's the case for you, just get a little bit older version of Adobe Audition. Write them a message. Ask them, you know, because they... They should be able to provide it to you. They want you to be able to still use it because they want your money. So I can't see me can't see why they why they wouldn't uh, provide you an older version when when necessary. All righty. Uh, yeah, I you know generally if it's not going to work, it's not. If they say it's not going to work, it's not going to work. So it may require you know. Of course, if you, if you're trying to move from Audacity to Audition, you might want to consider why would you want to move if you know, because Audacity can do everything you need. Although yeah. Audition is think about what reasons you want to make the upgrade yeah, and exactly and make a little pit stop at Twisted Wave on your way over. Just, That's just an excellent that idea. That, yeah, because <laughs> that usually will that will run on your iPhone for crying out loud. Yeah. 
Uh, Dan Delgado asks, Hey guys, I'm an audiobook narrator with a dynamic style, like Ray Lorter or Jeff Hayes. Okay. And I'm looking to improve my booth and would like to re- your recommendations on sound absorption. In particular, I'm looking to build panels out of either OC703 or rigid mineral wool. Is one better than the other overall? Do they perform differently for different frequencies? Is there a rigid mineral wool you would recommend over others? Did I miss any questions I should have asked? Insert sheepish shrug. Shrug. Oh, <laughs> oh, is there an episode where you guys go into detail on soundproofing? Thank you for the help in the entertainingly educational show. Uh, you know, is one better than the other? Unless you're like, you know, running a foghorn in there, uh, it's, is, is one going to be more soundproof than the other? Is one going to be, you know, what does all this stuff do? And, you know, is one better than the other? I think if you're using anything, anything is better than nothing. Well, there's a good place to look to compare a lot of these. Um, ATS acoustics, um, this company has been around a long time, been loving their product. Um, and they have on their website, a DIY section. Um, and what I can do is I can share that browser page because we can. Wow. Um, look at that. And so if you go to ATS doc, ATS acoustics.com, click on the DIY acoustics materials, click on acoustic installation, installation, and then look at the list. There's quite a list of materials here. If you start clicking on them, they will give you some information. So by far the most common is going to be Roxel AFB. Um, this is also AKA very similar to uh, the stuff they sell at like Home Depot. I think they call it safe and sound. Yep. Um, if you click on that, uh, it will take you to the info page about the product. Click on item description. Oh, nice sheets of rock wool and stuff. Yeah. And... Oh, actually, I think they have another chart called Selecting. Ah, here it is. They have it all on one page now. Oh. Nice. There's a great page on here for selecting the right acoustic material. And what it does is explains how different densities of material control sound at different frequencies. So the thing is you have to know what version of material you're talking about. OC703 is one type of material, which they have way down here at the bottom. And you'll notice the thickness even matters. Four inches, two inches, one inch. Um, and you'll see that when it's thicker, it generally is much better at low frequencies. Um, but make sure, that, yeah, when you're comparing OC703, compare it to something similar in rigid or in density. So uh, looking at OC703, it's a three-pound density rating per square uh, cubic feet. So we need to look at something that's similar. So Roxel AFB is pretty close at two and a half. And if we look at some of the critical frequencies, like the lower ones, 125 one, and 500, right in that really the meat of your vocal range, the Roxel AFB is, is 0.28. That's called NRC, higher is better. And the Owens Corning 703 is 0.17. So the Roxel is a little bit better um, at the same frequencies. Yeah. So go so check Dan, out this page. It's interesting. Yeah. Go, go to that page, Dan. It's, uh, you know, it, if you want to be that precise, do that. And of course, how do you determine what frequency range you need to control? And that really takes you actually having to talk a little bit in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, because you're not going to guess unless you have an ac- acoustician in your family. <laughs> describe those things ask around you might be surprised that's wait true. that's what you do <laughs> <laughs> there you go we got a clubhouse question oh yeah we do and uh waiting patiently is deanna i hope you're saying hello you deanna, deanna you're on the air you? yes hi that's correct it's deanna hi i'm great how are you good Excellent. thanks for joining us what is your question well um i have gone to your website because i own the road nt1 mm-hmm. and i see that you recommend the sure 815 hp high pass filter and i just want to understand mm. exactly what that's doing yeah so i've been recommending it i don't know if i want to say trepidatiously i did have someone buy one and it was defective which was so random because it's a very very simple product but what it does is it takes a road nt1 
which is very sensitive at low frequency and re reduces that low frequency sensitivity. So if you have that rumbling problem, when you hit record and in, in your Rode NT1 and you turn up your gain at the appropriate level and you see a big jaggedy line in the, in the room tone, something like this can help clean that up. Now, it doesn't mean you can't do it in post. You can just load an EQ setting in your software to do this. But sometimes it's kind of nice because it comes in clean or comes in looking cleaner. Um, it might make it faster and easy, easier to edit. So that's why I've been recommending it. Have you ever used that thing, Dan? It's called the Shure HP 15 or something like that. No, you know, I, you know, I generally try to control whatever low rumble frequencies there are. But when working with clients... Uh, where it's consistent that almost everybody has a, you know, a apartment subharmonic. buildings, condos, yeah, really any, anything that's like, you know, about anywhere from 90 or 80 Hertz and below something like that can help up front. There's no question about it. Uh, I've never used that particular one, but I know it works. It's a little uh, inline plug. It's like yeah. a barrel. It just looks like a long XLR, right. you know, and some microphones have, have a, have a bass roll off on them themselves. Some do, uh, yeah. And, uh, and those can be helpful. Some, you know, I, I know the E100S, the Cat E100S has one. And uh, I found that it tended to really be a little more wider than the frequency range they were saying. And it sort of so took something thinned, away. It thinned from, out your low, the it, low end of your voice. It, it really did. So, gotcha. uh, you know, so something like that can certainly help. It's worth a shot and yep. you can always return it. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> You're, You're welcome. quite welcome. Thank you. You want to get Jeff's question there? since he's Yes, been... Mr. Jeff Holman, our very own chat moderator. Uh, he says, it pos is it possible to set your router up with too many security features that might possibly create problems for a source connect session? What do you think? Um, yeah, well, <laughs> I, I, yes, I guess. I mean, the whole point of port mapping is that it, no matter how much security you've set up, the port is allowing that signal to come in. So you can have a very secure setup and you're punching a hole <laughs> through that whole thing. <laughs> That's what we call it a port. And that way. You know. Yeah, we're making a hole through the whole thing to allow that connection to work. Um, so I'm not aware of too much. Now, I know that having a firewall running on your computer itself, that's another place to create a failure point. And so you might want to not have a firewall running on your actual computer. Um, that I would probably re recommend. Um, ideal settings, uh, would be just using the standard wireless protocol for security, WPA2 personal. Yeah. You have a whole bunch of them listed here. Uh, WEP is really, really old and old school. And I don't think that is really the norm anymore. Um, WPA2 personal is, is probably fine. I, I have no idea. I've never tried anything more sophisticated or beyond WPA2 personal, yeah. like enterprise. I find Big, or, Big Sur is saying that, you know, your router has, uh, it doesn't have quite the security that it should. You really need to upgrade the, the oh, it uh, security. Oh, it does? It tells yeah. you that, huh? Yeah. Okay. So, Interesting. Well, I would, yeah, I mean, I'm not a, I'm not an IT geek. I, I don't know a lot of the really, really geeky IT stuff, um, honestly. Uh, the last thing is, what is IPvV6? IPv, IPv6 is the next generation of IP address. So instead of being 192.168.1.1, it's something completely different. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I can M tell More you. numbers to memorize. <laughs> it's a lot more digits. Um, they, I think they, they developed it because they were literally running out of IP addresses. So they had to have another way to, to assign a lot more addresses. Um, again, I'm not an EIT techie geek enough to really answer that. D in yeah. detail. Yeah. Uh, Dave G from YouTube says, hi, you guys rock. Well, of course. Thanks. Uh, just posted an Instagram about upgrading ear pads for comfort and sound. Any thoughts on that? Brainwaves make some nice upgrades. They make my K55 threes so comfy for long sessions. We talked about this, about some replacement ear pads a couple weeks ago, didn't we? I think we did. Yeah. Um, I'm using some, I have, actually, now I have the headphones here so I can hold them. Last week I mentioned them and I didn't have them handy, but this time I do. Um, these are the Audio-Technica headphones, and they have a very similar sized ear cup to the Sony's and to the Harlan Hogan uh, headphones as well. 
and I'm using an aftermarket headphone pad that is quite a bit squishier and deeper. See how deep that is? <laughs> it's got a lot of depth to it, you know? And um, I'm finding this really comfortable. And also, it sounds good. And I'm not exactly sure, exactly, exactly sure why they sound good hey. uh, compared to the originals, but they do. Um, I love the velour finish on them. So I, I think it's a good idea. Um, I think it's worth an experiment, but it's a bit of an experiment because it will change the way the headphones sound a little bit. Anything that changes the thickness of the pad, it moves the, the driver away or could move it in, but I, re I would never want one thinner. Um, but it does change it. But I've, I've, I really like the way mine sound. Um, have you ever experimented with that stuff? Mm, nope. I've, got, I've been wearing these for an hour and a half now, and they, they still yeah. feel fine. Yeah. We if, got you, a, if you have yeah. overly sensitive ears, you can get away with uh, you know, most stock ear pads without, without any problems. Yeah. Until they wear out, of course. Yeah. Uh, we got a question, another question on Clubhouse. Yeah, Bridget. Let's, get, let's get Bridget in. And hello, Bridget. Hi, thanks so much for taking the question. And sure. I've been learning so much from you guys. Oh, wonderful. Um, I have a, I've been having an ongoing issue with hiss and small waveform when I am recording on my, I have an iPad and I'm recording with Twisted Wave. Um, and then I'm transferring everything to my laptop to edit, which is a PC. And I'm using Audacity on the PC. I'm also using um, an Electro Voice RE320 for a microphone, mm -hmm. which I think you guys were just saying is probably George. George suggested that that <coughs> not particularly ideal always. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, and and yeah. So the reason you're getting hiss is because you really got to push the gain uh, on on a, it, on that mic. And yeah. what, what interface are you using? Um, you recommended the, I think you call it Centrance. It's the, um, uh, Oh, the mic board pro or the three knobs yeah. on the front. And I think, I think you probably recommended that because I I'm recording on an iPad. Right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I don't know. Yeah. But yes. I have, I got that in the mail last week and I got, um, good cable. One of those world's best cable cables. <laughs> and 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 I, I was hoping I am actually on the waiting list for a new um I took your suggestion for the the road NTG five. Okay. So I'm waiting for that. Uh but it might not be here for another six weeks. So no way. I didn't know they were back ordered. Wow. Yeah, it's bad. Okay. So I'm away uh, from Australia. So have you have you just out of just just for experimentation, have you tried recording from the Micboard Pro into your PC? I have not. Okay, I'm just and wondering why if not? any noise difference. <laughs> I'm just wondering, I'm wondering yeah. if any noise difference or not. You know what? I'm wrong. I did uh, when I first got it, and I did still get the hiss. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just because that microphone needs so much gain. You're probably having to run the gain knob on the MicPort Pro all the way up, like yeah, practically at the very top, huh? Um, it is probably eighty percent of the way up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it still shouldn't be getting any hiss on a. It shouldn't on a be mic that board noisy. Pro. I'm surprised, yeah. actually. Is this the Micport Pro Two? The the one that has three knobs on the front or two knobs? Yes, indeed, it is the Micport Pro Two. Gotcha. Um, I did I I did watch a couple of videos, um, uh, reviews on it, and there was somebody that said that it did have extra hiss. So I don't know if that's I I I didn't I wasn't sure if it was more the microphone or or the Micport Pro. Yeah, I without having another mic, you know, troubleshooting sometimes requires other stuff. So until you have another mic to test it out against, yeah. um, it's really hard to know. And any other mic you're going to use is going to be a condenser mic, so they're going to be yeah. quite a bit more sensitive. So it just might be the 320 dynamic mic and that interface are just not a great match. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it needs a okay. little bit more more. Give, it, let's in Yiddish, you'd say it needs more of a Zets. <laughs> needs more zets yeah would that explain the small waveform too then yes yeah, yeah you're, you're not, not getting, getting enough push yeah you, you, you need to you need to be modulating at least to minus nine and if you've got the little tiny waveform and then you and then you try to pump it up using normalize or something yep. like that or amplify you're gonna get lots of hiss so yep, you, ne you need exactly a, you need a good doing. yeah you need a good condenser mic or a, okay. an actual condenser mic 
Right. Thanks for calling. All thanks, right. Thanks, George. Thanks, Dan. Cheers. Hey, thanks for thanks for watching and listening. So, Dan, right. five yeah. questions in five minutes. Can we do it? Uh, all right. Let's go for it. <laughs> and there. Dean off. Wade. <laughs> Trek question in, in Adobe Audition. <laughs> um, I record a clip, and when playing back on the track, I get latency or echo. It seems to somehow be related to the sample rate. If rate is ninety six kilohertz or higher, no problem. Lower rates are when the echo shows up. Why does this happen? And clarification, the sample rate I'm referring to is found in the Adobe Auditions settings for hardware. Why are you um, recording at 96K for starters? Uh, I guess he's trying to troubleshoot. I, yeah. Dean, Dean, I hate to say it, we're going to move on, and here's why. We don't know anything about your computer, about your interface. We don't know what OS you're running. We don't know which version of Adobe Audition we're running. We just don't know enough about your system. Next, uh, Pamela... <laughs> You are. are. Um, any reason you wouldn't recommend the M1 Mini? Um, we pretty much covered, covered that, that at one. the top of the show, so we will move on to the next. Uh, uh, Gar Rogers. Dan, get this one. Yeah. Uh, Brian Falk mentioned the D2 mic. My recording space, I have gotten down to a noise floor that fluctuates between minus 54 and minus 63. That's okay. Good. Which is making me crazy. Well, then you're you're overthinking it. Uh, I just bought a monitor and will be removing the computer from the booth. Good. That might help a whole lot uh, to a more remote part of the room, which we always suggest. If that doesn't do the job, should I consider a hypercardioid mic like a 416 or like what you're using? The uh, what you've got a road. NTG5. Which, the NTG5. Yeah. Um, Probably. Maybe. I mean, yeah. we don't know what mic you have already. That's true. <laughs> yeah when you ask your questions Thanks. be real specific Details. about what yeah it's like we yeah we know what this mic does and with yeah. and how it interacts with you, yeah like every you voice have a is large different diaphragm cardioid mic that with no high pass filter and it's picking up rumble then chances are a shotgun mic which is less sensitive to rumble um will pick up less of it and yep. your noise floor should drop but if you're using an ldc large diaphragm condenser um and you're getting minus 54 to minus 63 peak noise floor on average you're doing pretty dang good when you say all right yeah 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 it's not a problem uh let's see here uh derek dysart from youtube how do i approach setting volume on my monitors my interface is in my booth and i want to control volume outside my booth how do i approach setting the volume on my interface versus the external control boy i just crank mine and <laughs> you know until they sound right you know you're you Studio monitors are what we call near field monitors. And ideally you're like two and a half to three feet away from them and they're angled at you. And the acoustics have to be right in the room that you're using the monitors in. Here's so, a quick hack, I guess. You could you yeah. could plug if your computer is outside, you could plug your studio monitors directly into your computer output. It's not my favorite solution, but you could do that. And then when you yeah. go to play back and edit, you could just switch your output to built in sound. That is something you could do. Or you're going to have to go and get a monitor Another. level control, like a Mackie big knob. Get a passive one. Boom. Don't get something really complex. Just get a really basic volume knob and just run the cables out from the booth, from the interface, out to your speakers where you'll have a volume knob to control them. So that would be my last suggestion. Yeah, I think that's, that's an excellent suggestion. Thanks. Uh, Jennifer Dixon. Yes. Nothing wrong with my mic. I'm working Good. regularly. I just want to know if there's anything I should be using or not doing. Anything I to need to be doing. Doing well. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, the mic is a Sure PG42 USB. You've had it. She's had it for five years. I've Great known mic. that mic for 12 to 15 years. Great mic. It is a good mic. It is uh, EQ wise. It has a little funkiness. It can be a little harsh or sibilant. And I didn't think of that when I first got one and recommended it. But now I hear it against other mics. There well, are some, 15 years later, technology is, you know, yeah, you know, exponential in, in development. It, it ain't bad. I can EQ it to sound pretty good, but it's, it's a little, not, not the smoothest sounding mic out there. So, you know, if you've been using a USB mic and getting by for five years, maybe that mic's paid for itself. Maybe by now you could step it to something a little bit more premium. Yeah. Not crazy. I, 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 yeah. I might suggest that you send us some audio to see what it yeah, sounds see like where you're starting from. If it sounds yeah. fine, we're not going to tell you to buy something for no reason, but right. Five years on a USB mic. Yeah. Eh, I, I if might, you're I booking might. work, yeah. You know, <laughs> th then the question always becomes, 
what book are you what work are you not booking because you're yeah, using what, that. yeah exactly what book work are you not booking and uh, there's a lot more questions to ask from that. Um, yeah. Ed, Ed, o Ed O'Dwyer from an M1 user, from M1 users, that's the Silicon Mac, on YouTube, I understand it has issues with Bluetooth. Oh, I meant to mention that. Yes. Bluetooth can sometimes suck pretty bad. I don't know why. Uh, if your mouse is uh, right next to it, it still can be bad. It, it, it was giving me trouble this morning. And, I, and, and it's usually that magic mouse, and I don't, I just don't, there's no excuse for it. I threw them more money and bought a trackpad like this, and I literally plug it in with lightning so it's always connected. And that is the part that makes me a little mad <laughs> that I'm <laughs> buying a $140 trackpad to plug it into the computer to get a reliable connection. But yeah, I've even been buying the old Mighty Mice on eBay to help people out. The USB one with a little tiny ball on top. Because, yeah, there is an issue. <laughs> I hope it's something they can fix with firmware. But if not, uh, maybe wait till the next one comes out. Yep. Uh, Dave G from YouTube. George, any preference for plans for a DIY booth build without stepping on any sponsors' toes, of course? No, I really don't because <laughs> they all pretty much suck unless you're an, a master a master craftsperson. Master, master craftsperson. Do, don't even attempt um, I don't know any that I can recommend wholeheartedly, honestly. Um, lastly, uh, Alicia Hurley, which was a leftover from last week. What app can I use for mouth clicks? Most people are using Isotope RX. It's one of the RX series. RX8 is the current one using mouth de click. Um, that is by far the most uh, common. And Ed Kelly, the very last one, we'll slip this one in. I have the ancient Adobe Audition 5.0. No subscription. <laughs> When I try to use the deesser, it beach balls on me every time. Is there a yeah. patch? You're not going to uh, like my answer, Ed. No, the, the answer is pretty obvious. Don't it's like cheap. Bite the bullet. <laughs> Go get the creative cloud, <laughs> upgrade, and have patches. Every, that is the patch all the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm spent. Yeah, boy, we've been at it for a good two and a half hours here, and uh, you know. We love getting your questions. Thank you, guys. Yeah. It's been yeah. fun. When you ask it, though, be real specific about what your situation is, what mic you're using, what and interface if it's you're using. Or computer related, make sure we know what the computer is. If it's glitches, make sure we know everything. We need to know right. what the computer is, the model, the OS version, the OS you're using. We need to know all that stuff. Right. And if you have a question for us, you can ask it at any time. Once again, you can write to us at. The guys at vobs.tv. There it is right there. Easy to get a hold of us. I see those this email all the time. And sometimes again I say I you know I will answer it. Sometimes George will grab it. And sometimes I'll go, Did you see this question? Perhaps we need to discuss this one on the show or something like that. So uh, write to us there. Uh or and of course you can be on Clubhouse or you can be here on Facebook. Uh, if you're here live, it's a lot more fun because you can interact with us. Uh, but if you're watching this show and replay, look at the great answers we give to these questions. So feel free to ask them at any time. All right. Well, we're going to be right back after these important messages and we'll uh, send it on home so we can eat dinner or whatever it is that we do right after this. This is Ariana Ratner and you're listening to Voice Over Body Shop, VOBS.TV. Hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, with VO Heroes, and you may be watching Voice Over Body Shop, V-O-B-S, because you're interested in becoming a voice talent, and you looked around the internet, you found that this was a great place to come, and you're absolutely right. Um, but you don't have any of the knowledge yet as to how to get started, and I'd like to help you with that. I've got a free course online, you can take it anytime you want. It's called Getting Started in VoiceOver, and it walks you through the equipment you need, the business side of things, the actual categories of voiceover work that you'll likely be pursuing, and also the mindset that you need to have when you're getting started and moving into being successful at doing voiceover for a career. So if you're an actor or you're not an actor, you want to side grade from another business, you want to learn about voiceover, go to voheroes.com slash start. That's voheroes.com slash start for the VO Heroes Getting Started in VoiceOver class. And I'll see you there. 
In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching VoiceOver Body Shop. It's great. Well, another hour has passed by, and look how much information has been shoved into your brain. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it leaked out of mine and onto my shirt. Oh. As you can see. Oh, that, what, you're not supposed to be eating during the show. It's just water. Okay. Never mind. <laughs> Anyway, um, next week on this very show on uh, May 3rd, uh, we will have Neil Ross, a well-noted uh, voice actor and narrator, and he has a new book coming out. should be very interesting. Uh, cool. And uh, But we have donors. We get donors. We get lots and lots of donors. Donors. Lee Penny, Michael Kearns, Christy Burns, Graham Spicer, Uncle Roy at Antland Productions. Michelle Blanker, Sarah Borges, Christopher Epperson, Philip Sapir, and Trey Mosley. Thank you, all of you, who donated at VOBS.TV. Absolutely. Really, really appreciate it. Yeah. And remember, George and I do this for a living. We help you with your home voiceover studios. Talk about a niche. Uh, but if you want to work with George, you can go over to georgethe.tech. And if you want to work with me, you can go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. And sometimes you'll end up getting both of us, in which case you'll be doubly blessed. <laughs> or endlessly confused. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, that's a normal state of affairs. No, we, we try to make sure we're on the same page. That's true. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. VoiceOver Extra. Source Elements. VO Heroes. Uh, VoiceActorWebsites.com. And JMC Demos. All righty. Thanks to Jeff Holman for getting it done in the chat rooms tonight. Uh, we were on Clubhouse. Thanks for attending on Clubhouse. We love having you there. Our amazing technical director, uh, who flawless tonight. Everything worked the way it was supposed to. That's right. Sue Merlino, thanks for that. And Lee Penny, of course, for simply being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week. Uh, again, we'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your donations. Thanks for just being there. And thanks for being in the voiceover business. But as we like to say, look, if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. VO. B S. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. We'll see you next week, guys.